Another beautiful day in the desert. There's camp. No idiots to be seen. And I'm going to show you what I keep in my toolbox. That's my toolbox right there. Things that we can see. A 20 ton bottle jack from Harbor Freight. Claw hammer. A long heavy duty extension cord. Some distilled water for refilling batteries. A hose for getting water out of springs or the occasional siphoning. Eh, just kidding. And I'll get into what's in these other containers. These, by the way, are tool bags from Harbor Freight. Very cheap and better than decent quality. Okay, I'm gonna start digging into this stuff. So in the first bag, <clears throat> this is what's in there. Some uh, combination wrench from Harbor Freight. Uh, you know, the set. And then a bunch of sockets, some pliers, ratchets, extensions, a little uh, magnetic dish, a set of um, standard and metric Allen wrenches, and a bunch of screwdrivers and a rag. And that should get most of the stuff that you're going to be able to fix on the road done. And that's in the bag number one. Okay, bag number two. This is my electrical testing equipment <clears throat> for troubleshooting and fixing. And there's a uh, multimeter, which Anybody that doesn't have a multimeter with them is really missing the boat. And then a scan tool for scanning the uh, codes. Uh, and next to that is a battery tester. Now, if you take your battery down to AutoZone to have it tested to see if it's good or bad, they're going to check it with a, like a load tester. And from all the research I've done when I had a problem with a battery, um, it seems like those load testers do not really tell you what you need to know. And this, this tester here will tell you what the cold cranking amps in a battery are. Now you could take this voltmeter and you can check your battery and it, it will show that it's got the right amount of voltage in it. But when you hook this thing up there, it's going to tell what the cold cranking amps are. And even if your battery has got the right voltage after being charged, it may not have enough cold cranking amps to start your vehicle. Um, this is this this tool would probably cost me forty bucks, fifty bucks maybe, and it's really a great thing to have. Uh, and then I have some uh, you know, electrical tape and a soldering iron and some solder and then stripper tools and a small test light. Now uh, you can fix a lot of stuff with this little bit of equipment right here. Bag so number three is a way for me to put air into things. A small compressor. And this one is the Master Flow Tsunami MF 1050 and when I bought this I got it on Amazon I got it for a great price compared to what they're asking now I think I paid 50 bucks including shipping and now they're I think up around 80 or so um, and then I have a, a, a pressure tire pressure gauge and some accessory hoses that go along with this stuff this is just something that you really need to have because if you're out here driving around these old uh, washes and stuff like I do 
um, there's a real good chance you're going to have to air down your tires. And if you don't have a way to air them back up, then you just might be SOL sitting out there next to the side of the highway with a long ways to go to a gas station. And aside from that, I have air shocks in my van and I have a bicycle that I want to keep aired up. Okay, in the uh, box that I had there, I have some, uh, oh, a few other things. I have uh, an old pair of pants and an old t-shirt that I would put on if I had to work on something really uh, greasy and nasty. Uh, I have a um, tarp, some Bob's butt wipes in case it's a really shitty job, some fast orange for cleaning hands, shop towels, a battery charger, a variable speed drill. This is not a not a cordless drill. This drill requires me to plug it in to power, which I have. A piece of uh, heater hose that I found alongside the road. Somebody apparently fixed their problem and decided that uh, they just go ahead and throw away the last three feet of hose that they didn't need. Uh, and in case I want to look like a real professional, I can wear a shop apron. Okay. In this hard box here, which I keep under my bed, I have a variety of fix-it stuff. A variety of drivers. Miscellaneous nuts, bolts, and screws. A bunch of electrical connectors. A little glob of who knows what. Down here, a file. A turkey baster for Thanksgiving or for pulling fluid out of, say, your master cylinder, a little wire brush for cleaning things, a couple of clamps, come in handy if you got to do a brake job, some cable ties, extra solar wire, a cheap hacksaw, a tire repair gear, a chain tool for my bicycle, an extension, some mirrors, a set of leather gloves, a drill set, a spare distributor cap and rotor and the um, socket that is used for doing the spare, um, spark plugs, and some uh, signal reflectors in case of a breakdown. And there's all the three bags packed away, nice and neat, not in the way. And then back here, we have the rest of the stuff up under there. Easy, easy. It on the tool series. I'd like to bring more tools because obviously I'm a tool junkie, but there's a limit. And I feel pretty confident in what I have with me that it would suffice in just about anything that I'm going to be able to fix out there on the road. I, I'd suggest to everybody get your get some tools together and learn which end to use because if you're going to choose living on the road as a lifestyle the vehicle obviously has a lot of importance and um, despite what Bob Wells likes to uh, put out there as far as you can live off of six hundred dollars a month well yeah you can but um, you better be able to fix some of your own stuff because um, $600 is not going to go a very long ways if you need to um, pay people to do every little thing. And I'll tell you, in, in, I'm 63 years old, and in my lifetime I've probably gone to a mechanic five times. And um, usually would have to redo the work or do some tweaks to get it to work right because a lot of problems with vehicles 
take time to diagnose and the only way you can do that is by driving it and, and just uh, working on figuring out what the problem is. And mechanics don't do that. They just uh, pick what they think it might be from experience and then they, uh, put that part on there, charge you an arm and a leg, and then that wasn't the right thing. And then, of course, they're going to work on it some more and put another part on there that may or may not fix the problem. And, uh, you know, if you're out here living off of 600 bucks a month, then you've obviously made some wrong choices in your life. Um, try to make the right one when it comes to this kind of thing. Because, um, you know, you're just going to have a whole lot more money and live a much better lifestyle if you learn to take care of your own things. End of sermon.